All right, welcome back to The Seven Deadly Sins, anime review, episode number 67. We are here viewing episodes 19 and 20 of The Seven Deadly Sins, The Four Nights of the Apocalypse, which is basically the third or fourth episode of the Chaos and Leonis arc. Yep. So, basically, right after the whole thing, while well, searching for uh, Galahar, uh, Gearway, I think is, the other person's name. So, we do see what we're looking for. We see this woman wearing green. This one was actually the woman we're looking for. They just happened to pass by her. So, then, of course, Khaled thinks he sees the actual person, so he proceeds to murder them. You know, the person looking for. And, of course, it was pointed out by On that he is being a dick. Yeah, here's the thing. He's, he, like in the case of Tristan, is also the, the son of one of the princes, one, one of the princesses of the, of the, of the royal family. He's part of the royal family. He's the son of the eldest daughter of the three daughters that King, that the previous king had. Well, technically, everyone was adopted. And he has this elitist nonsense. Like, he trusts Tristan, no problem. He trusts, basically, well... And, and he does not trust Lancelot or... Personally, because first was Country Bumpkins. Despite the fact that Lancelot is a prince. Yes, like him, he is also a prince, but he doesn't give a damn. No, because of his stupid, elitist mindset. And even Tristan basically got hint from Aunt from about that. So, oh yeah, and this knight is not the one looking for. So, in her basically is moping that, oh, maybe Tristan rejected her. Not really. And then we see Gahar just walk up to her, talk to her, and put her hand on her hip. Yes, her hand on her hip. And then, of course, basically, meanwhile, though, like, oh, by the way, the reason why she did this because Gerhard, it's implied she might be a lesbian. Yes, let's make sure the third character in the entire series to be not straight. Nope, first time we actually had a female one basically be a lesbian. I mean, yeah. It's almost like the way she was doing it, it's like, yeah, and of course, basically, like, the Black Knight, or, yeah, basically, like, what's going on is that, well... The chief of security, uh, Padre, I think his name is, where he finds this mysterious guy, who is actually a black knight. He fights him, and of course they, of course, first was recognized the first image. Oh yeah, make me my people. And first was like, yeah, I know who he is. He is he's he's one of the he's one Arthur. He's one, he's, a, he's basically one of the servant one Arthur's servants. He's a knight of chaos. Yeah. And of course, he changes his attire to his black armor. And of course, Gilmore, she she shows up too. And of course, he calls her a little girl. And of course, basically, she's really strong. Yeah, and like the episode, episode 17 end, it's going to 17, 8, 8, 19 ends with the assembly of all four Knights of Apocalypse. So, feel that Lancelot is one of the Knights of Apocalypse as well. So. And they fight him for a bit, and then, of course, he proceeds to... Of course, Purse pretends to calm down, maybe change sides. Nope, he takes Purse and runs away with him. Gar uh, basically, Tristan takes after him, and of course, Gerwin basically just teleports and just uses his whole knife and slices right at him. He's like, he, he points out, though, that, well... That he's your ally. You're basically like... Like, she just didn't care. She just really want to take him down because she he dare call her a little girl. Well, we'll get to that. So, and the fact she feels insulted by this guy. By the way, in case you're wondering, I'm doing ripping off a, a wrapper off of a bottle because basically got a little loose, so I basically just ripping the whole thing off. So, yeah. And of course, basically, it's like Percival basically punches her for, well, for daring to slice to him, and of course. The Black Knight proceeds to repay the favor by blocking her punch. 
And of course, basically, she beats up Tristan a bit, punches Tristan, and of course, then he proceeds to, after this little while, of course, she decides to, like, he decided to chastise her, like, yeah, you may be strong, powerful, you need more training. And basically, she starts throwing a tantrum. Yes. Yes, she throws a tantrum. A grown, what looked like a grown woman throwing a tantrum. And she's like, only strong people are strong, you can order me around. Look how Trista basically has inherited his mother's, like, charms. To calm down beautiful women. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, I mean, what was Giver going to do to Isan? I think she was probably either going to kiss her or probably have sex with her. That's my guess. Like, ooh, a romantic gesture. Because she likes the ladies. Yeah. And, of course, she's actually 16, and, of course, first, like, like, of course, people keep calling me first of a kid because, well, he's the size of a kid. He's like, I'm 16, too. And, well, of course, they go back. And meanwhile, though, we have these two cloaked figures being cornered by the Holy Knights. One of them gets away, and then the other one, who's a woman, takes out a statue skull of one of the dead Ten Commandments. Which one, you might ask? Gallad. And then she proceeds to ask Purgatory to revive him. And then she reveals who she is. Masakana! The woman who had the ability to bring back dead people. And now first of us, Chaos Malakana. And he refers himself as Chaos Galad. Now in case you're curious though. Okay. So. How was he a statue head? A little explanation for that. He had a contest with Eskinor, which of course he broke one of his own rules, so he's turned to stone. And then the statue was broken. Technically, in the way, he was the first Ten Commandment to die in the series. Mesakana, meanwhile, though, she did die at one point. I think at, well, she, this is the one who also broke Elaine because she did die previously. She was killed by this unnamed demon. And she also brought back Gil, uh, Gil Thunder's father. The same man who was murdered. Well, basically the, the, the blame of his death was pinned on the seven deadly sins. But in actuality, it was actually his brother being possessed by a demon who did it. And he got back briefly and apparently he forgave his brother because he wasn't even possessed at the time. So he forgave him. He did briefly reunite with his son Gil Thunder. And I'm sure if he was alive, he'd probably be, well, not happy with his grandson. He'd probably be scolding him a lot for being a complete dick to people. But great ending to the episode: Return of two of the ten, ten two of the two of the ten commandments. One of them is still left. Actually, two two are actually still alive. One is an actual god, well, one of the goddess clan, and he's basically back to his own thing and. Zedros, well, he said he was going to become the... Basically, he, he, and, uh, he and his lover, Gilda, went back to Demon Realm. And I still could think of basically Melissa's line he said to him when he fell into her chest. He's like, oh, I didn't know you were a breast man, Zedros. <laughs> Zedros. Yeah, but a lot of these two episodes, we have only four more to go. And then we're done. Yep. So yeah, that's particularly a particular view. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on keys, and do this like button. I'm gonna hold off my last comment corner for I'm just gonna go straight to back watching the next few episodes. I might do the next comment corner probably with the next thing. Now, I can't confirm this that the uh Jujutsu Kaisen, that series officially is wrapped up now. Which that's interesting it comes one month after the conclusion of My Hero Academia and Jujutsu Kaisen's finished up. So right now I'm just waiting for the anime. So in the case of what's going to be the next first thing I'm going to do today, it's going to be my hero academia. Probably after I finish up watching the last four episodes of the series of season that's aired for uh, Fortnite's Apocalypse. So that will come soon. So next up, more episodes. Okay? Next video. Bye.